Good morning. We bring you greetings from the Morning Star Baptist Church, and we're thankful uh, that you've chosen this place of worship on today. Just want to uh, let you know that we will be observing our Lord's Supper on today, and so uh, persons who may not have uh, been able to receive the elements, uh, I invite you to uh, maybe take some juice or uh, even uh, water, and you may take crackers or bread, trimmings, and uh, may use that as your elements on today uh, as we observe the Lord's Supper. Uh, this time we're going to be blessed in special music by Sister Elaine Porter, and she's going to come in her own special way. Praise Him. Praise Him. 
Let us pray together. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from thee up above, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, for sanctioning this day in history that we may come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, minister to us by your word today, oh God. Oh God, give us knowledge, give us wisdom. Oh God, give us an understanding. Oh God, that we may acknowledge you in all your dreams. And oh God, we thank you in advance for all that you shall do. We ask it all, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. scripture lesson is taken this morning from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to begin reading in verse 23. Book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 began reading at verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whosoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord unworthily or in an unworthily manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eateth and drinketh in an unworthy manner, eateth and drinketh judgment to himself, and not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that when we that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if any man hunger, let him eat at home, lest you come together unto judgment. And the rest will I set in order when I come. <clears throat> for just a few minutes, you all, from uh, this text, and, uh, and we hear this text uh, so often on the first Sunday morning, I just want to talk about a time to remember a time to remember. My brothers and sisters, this familiar takes uh, Paul writes to the church at Corinth and he shares with them just how this Lord's Supper ought to take place. And uh, uh, so many times we do things uh, so often that sometimes we lose sight of, we forget the meaning behind it. And so Paul in some sense, he reminds them why we gather here, for what purpose, and what do we do once we gather in this place. I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, there are three points of interest that uh, I believe that is lifted out of this text, and, and that it is a time of commemoration. It's a time of commemoration. The Bible says that when they came together, they came at a time to remember because uh, the Old Testament saints uh, uh, remember the time of Passover. You remember Passover was that time when God had demanded that uh, the firstborn would be taken and the Bible says that the death angel went through it, they would spread the blood on the door, uh, that he would pass over that house. 
my brothers and sisters, as they assembled together, they remembered the sacrifice that God calls to come upon their household, their families, their generations. And my brothers and sisters, but at this particular time, uh, it drew new significance. For the Bible says that when they gathered there, that, that Jesus uh, declared unto them after they had supped that he, uh, that he took uh, the bread and he declared unto them that this was my body which was broken for you it had not even happened yet but jesus shares with them how precious this moment is and he he takes the bread and he breaks it again that they may understand that one day that his body would be broken in such a manner not only for them but for you and i here today and I am reminded this morning, my brothers and sisters, as we come to the table, that we commemorate the broken body of Jesus Christ. But then we also commemorate, uh, for Jesus says that in a like manner that he took the cup. The Bible says after uh, he had supped, he gave unto them, and he challenges them uh, that this is the blood of a New Testament. Uh, the Old Testament was between Moses and God and the Israelites and God. But he says, now I am drawing up a new testament. I'm drawing up a new testimony. I'm drawing up a new covenant. And it is through my precious blood. The Bible says that as he drank from the cup, he gave unto them uh, that they may have part of the cup. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, that when we gather when we celebrate, when we observe the Lord's Supper, it is to remember uh, the sacrifice that Jesus made for your sins and my sins. Jesus, whose body uh, a few days later would be broken down, they would spend one night and they would whip him. Uh, the old preacher said all night long, they whipped him to blood and flesh, uh, became exposed, and, and the Bible says that that, that there, Jesus' uh, body was sacrificed uh, for your sins and my sins. One writer would even come back and argue that he stood in propitiation for us. He stood in our place. A few days later, he would stand at the cross of Calvary and they would put nails in his hands and nails in his feet and put a thorny crown upon his head. But he did that not because he had sinned, but because of our sin at the at the at the. Uh, heading of the cross uh, uh, was the title King of the Jews. But I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, perhaps at the heading of Jesus' cross was John Johnson. Uh, at the heading of the cross was uh, Gabrielle. At the heading of the cross was Jamal. He had your name and my name. He had your salvation and my salvation on his mind when he gave up the ghost cross at Calvary. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus builds for us this new covenant, I will suggest, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we come to the table to commemorate what Christ has done. He's made a sacrifice for our sins, but he also suffered for our sin. Uh, the Old Testament gave the idea that whenever uh, uh, one's sins of the community was taken, they would put it on a scapegoat and they would send the goat out and hope that he would not return again. Jesus became our scapegoat because Jesus bore our sins once and for all that from this day until eternity will be saved with him. I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, it is a time to uh, uh, commemorate his suffering. It's a time to commemorate uh, his sacrifice that he makes for your sins and my sins. My brothers and sisters, I, I, want, to, I want to suggest that not only was it a, a time of, uh, of commemoration, but it was a time of contemplation. For the Bible says, that Jesus did that, that we might be saved. 
And the true reality is that you and I now live in the presence of the Lord, not because of the good that we've done, not because of the kindness that we've shown, but we're here today by the grace of God. Thanks be to God for his grace that he extends to us, uh, even while we were yet sinners. The Bible says uh, that, that uh, in, in, in 3 and 23, for all that sin and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible also says in Romans, but he demonstrated his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I realize, my brothers and sisters, sometimes it draws us into a time of contemplation that we look within ourselves and recognize the fact that we're not here because we've been so good or so kind. But Christ had enough for me that he would die for me that I might be saved. And the Bible says, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I would argue, my brothers and sisters, it ought to be a time of contemplation that we reflect upon how good and how gracious God has been to us. And listen, the truth of the matter is, you don't have to sit down long to remember where you've been and how far you've been away, but thanks be to God that he's brought you closer to him. Because, my brothers and sisters, sin brings about separation between us and God. And thanks be to God that, that, that he, he shed his blood for the remission of our sins. The Bible says, for without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. Jesus paid the price for all. He paid it once and for all and for all of our sins. I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, it's a time of commemoration that we reflect upon his broken body. We reflect upon his shed blood. Uh, but it's a time of contemplation that we recognize that we are saved today, not upon our own, but it is the gift, it is the grace of God. But then uh, it's also a time of sharing. He says that you not only receive salvation, but you ought to share salvation. He says, as often as you do this, you proclaim my death. And, and what that literally gives you permission to do is to declare the greatness and the goodness of God. And I would argue, he says, as often as you do this. And my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter whether you do it once a week or, or once a month or once a year. He says, but whenever you do it, you do it to reflect it. Uh, the power of Jesus Christ in your life. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people think that they're not worthy and they're not. This, and, and, and there is some power to that because sometimes uh, we yield our, our hearts and our, our minds to the weaponry of Satan. And Satan uh, uh, employs his hips to, uh, to distract us, to uh, cause us to go in ways that's contrary to the will of God. And, and, and listen, y'all, before we partake of the body of Jesus Christ, there ought to be a time of contemplation. Lord, I sin before you. I confess my sins before you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says in this text that if you examine yourself, you need not to be judged. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, every time we come to the table of God, we ought to do self-examination of our own sins. Uh, because the truth of the matter is we've not all uh, 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 been so good and so great, but, but, but we have fallen short of the glory of God. But listen, the word declares that if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Listen, if you needed a time to shout, that's a good time to shout right there. Thanks be to God for the confessing of our sins. And the Bible says he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Listen, the good news is uh, the, the, the Old Testament says that he throws them behind his back, throws it into a sea forgetfulness, not because he forgot, but because he chooses to remember them no more. Listen, I, I would argue, my brothers and sisters, it's a time of sharing. It's a, it's a time of, of, uh, of, of salvation. 
Uh, but it's also a time of conviction that I, I look within myself and, and see where I am with God. And, and if I have not, listen, he gives me an opportunity to confess my stuff before God. And God, right where I am, in my living room, in my kitchen, in my restroom, God, right where we are, will forgive us of our stuff. And listen, the truth of matter is some argue that, but preacher, you don't know where I've been and you don't know how long I've been there, but it's all right. God already knows. He's seen you afar off and he's bringing you nearer and closer to him. The challenge is, will you trust him? Will you believe him in spite of where you've been? Listen, my brothers and sisters, I would suggest to you that it's a time of commemoration. It's a time of contemplation. But then you all, I would argue that it's a time of celebration. I know some would argue, uh, but my preacher, to come around the table, it's not a time to rejoice. Not, well, listen, uh, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, he says, do this until I shall come again and receive you unto myself. Listen, that's reason for celebration that for no other reason is because he's coming back again. Listen, this, this celebration, y'all, be, uh, ought to begin with a, a time of compassion. But why? Because we remember the whole reason why Jesus sacrificed his life uh, was because he loved us. And listen, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. The Bible says, go the Father said, he didn't come to condemn the world, but that they through him might be saved. I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, is that if we commit a life and a relationship with Jesus Christ, listen, I want to argue that's worthy of celebrating. Listen, he goes even further, you all, uh, in the New Testament. He says, but God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans uh, 5 and 8 <clears throat> and John 15 and 13 says, greater love have no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. And listen, y'all, the good news is, is that not only are we his friends, but listen, he argues in the two New Testament that we become joint heirs with him. Listen, I want to suggest y'all, we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we come to the table of the Lord, not only are we commemorating, not only are we co contemplating, but listen, we are celebrating because of the compassion of Jesus Christ. But then I would argue, my brothers and sisters, we can also celebrate his conquest. For the Bible says in John 11, 25 and 26, it was this same Jesus that would suggest that I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he may uh, die, he shall live. And whosoever lives in me shall never die. And he poses a question, do you believe this? And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, uh, that the reason why we can rejoice today is because Jesus had already conquered death. But one Friday when he hung and bled and died for your sins and my sins, and uh, the Bible says that the uh, Tyrian soldier pierced him in his side and blood and water came streaming down. And the Bible says that they confirmed that he died that day, but they placed him in a barber man's tomb and all day Friday, all day Saturday, on Sunday morning, the Bible says that God raised him from the dead with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And listen, because he lives, you and I have a right to salvation today. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that he's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions on our behalf. I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, he, 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 he had compassion on us. He conquered death. Oh, grave, where is thy sting? Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Jesus took our place, and Jesus now has victory in our lives. And 
when we come to the table of the Lord, it ought to be a time that we can celebrate Christ. But listen, if you don't have to celebrate it for no other reason, uh, celebrate his uh, compassion, celebrate uh, his conquest, but listen, finally celebrate that he's coming back again. He says, do this until I shall come again and receive you unto myself. That's the great joy of believers is to know that Jesus one day will come back again. We will receive him. He will receive us as our, our Lord and our Savior. And the Bible says that we will go with him and there that we shall crown him King of Kings and Lords of Lords. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that's reason for celebrating that he is coming back again. When we gather here in this place on first Sunday mornings, uh, we, we usually end with a song uh, that says, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me one day when I was lost. He died upon the cross. It says, I know it was the blood for me. And, and, and our last verse that we normally sing is that he's coming back again. And the true reality is, is that we've got to know, understand, and agree that he is coming back again. The real question this morning is, is will you be ready? It's not whether mama was ready, whether daddy is ready. The real question is, will you be ready? I want to acknowledge this morning, my brothers and sisters, you can know that you're ready if you trust him. The Bible says Jesus uh, tells his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. Ye that believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. We were not so, I would not told you so. But I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. Listen, my brothers and sisters, it's a love theme here. You all, it's, it's a love theme because whenever a man in that era was to marry a woman, he had to go and prepare a place so that when they married, they would already have a place that they, and Jesus says, my bride is the church, and, and I'm coming back to receive my bride. And, and, and the realization, Matthew 25 tells us, no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come, but when he come, the world will know that he's here. The Bible says, just as that day uh, when, uh, when he returned, the bridegroom returned, the Bible says, they shut the door, and there was some who came later, and the Bible says they knocked, but they would not let them in. My, my, my challenge today is, is that whatever you're going to do for Christ today, listen, next Sunday is not the time. The time is right now. While he's begging at your heart, while he's ministering right where you are. Listen, you don't have to go and fix yourself up. You don't have to go make yourself right. Jesus died so that you could come unto the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And if you have never made a relationship with him, this is my brother and sister. Communion doesn't mean much to you, but I want to argue, when you do know him, as your Lord and your Savior. When you do know that he died one Friday for your sins, when you do know that he took your place on the cross of Calvary. Listen, the, the hymnology says it was at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, the burdens of my heart rolled away. My brothers and sisters, I would argue, when you really come to know him, that little stuff of this world don't matter much, but just to know him, and that he will fulfill and make our lives brand new. God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, O oh God, uh, for this day and your blessings. We thank you for the perfect sacrifice that you made for our sins, O oh God. And Master, we trust you. We ask, O oh God, that you would, uh, O oh God, receive us as your Lord and your Savior. But oh God, and we trust you, O oh God, uh, to make our lives brand new, oh God. Master, oh God, make room for us at this table today, oh God. Master, we ask that you would bless these elements, bless this wine, bless this bread. Oh God, we realize that all are symbolic of your broken body and your shed blood. And at home right now, there are those who 
taken their element. And oh God, I pray that you would bless them, oh God, and use them, that you would get the glory out of it, oh God. And then God, uh, we're examining ourselves and we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and our faults and our failures. Cleanse us and make us white as snow, oh God. And God, uh, bless now this time of communion together. Let it bring glory and honor to your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.